Hi guys! It's Lillian here, the Postmodern Mom, and I'm sorry I haven't been able to post very much recently, but it's because I've been feeling really sick. So this is the official announcement that we, the Postmodern family, and I myself, the Postmodern Mom, am pregnant again! Yay! I think there's such a joy in keeping a good home and watching your children grow up and cooking and cleaning and supporting your husband. So this is baby number three and I'll show a little video of the baby moving from this first ultrasound. We went to a uh, private ultrasound this time. Daddy! 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 We are going to go see an ultrasound of the baby. What are those? Baby. New baby, mommy tummy. <gasps> we went to a place and we saw these pictures. Let's look at them. Come on. I had been tossed back and forth from the NHS midwives and my my um, first scan wasn't put was was scheduled so far in the future. It was uh, like at 13 weeks is when it's actually scheduled. So I haven't even been there yet. I am currently today 12 weeks and one day according to this private scan um, and according to my original dates I'm still 11 weeks and um, four or five days something like that but um, I've been feeling so sick and bloated and big <laughs> and tired and nauseous that I haven't been taking any videos of myself really and We've just been doing what we could to sustain the the, fam, the Postmodern Family YouTube channel, uh, the three videos a week. So I haven't been doing much vlogging and now I'm going to start um, doing weekly vlogs with you, possibly starting every two weeks. But I think weekly vlogs are okay for this content, which is basically talking about how the pregnancy is going and we're going to watch my butt grow. And that's the fun thing about this is last time, in case you don't know, I am a mom of two currently and I have three, one in the, one in the oven, um, but, the, but the last one we had uh, vlogged or documented was our second born and that was really the beginning of our total vlogging journey. We hadn't started YouTube and so the whole point of that first year <laughs> of, of starting YouTube was how is the baby growing and kind of like mom updates and things like that mixed in with Americans living in the UK and how we're adjusting, what we find different in culture and so many things have happened. So I, what I really enjoyed from the last pregnancy was this the weekly or bi-weekly vlogs and where I got to record how my bump was growing and my progression and now I could probably go back and look. I only started at 16 weeks last time and this time I felt like I really should have started earlier but I was feeling so sick. So this time we're starting at 12 weeks pregnancy and we'll be carrying on all the way through to the birth. We'll have hopefully a photographer and we'll video the birth again like we did last time and just talk about the differences and bringing a third child into this world. Um, for those of you who may not know, we had two miscarriages previously and that's probably one of the reasons why too that we waited until 12 weeks to tell people. Um, but what's fun about it is that this time around I'm going to record my bump in the same dress all the way through. So I bought this dress on like you know how Facebook adverts pop up? Well, this one was called Pat Pat, and it was about maternity clothes. And I, they had a lot of maternity clothes for sale um, for like eight pounds or even less. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna grab some. And this one was really pretty. Um, it's basic, it's like four maternity shoots. So what I'm gonna do is just see how it grows. Sorry, the baby just woke up. The a second one, the boy. Um, anyway, we'll let him cry a little bit while I talk to you about this. So. Uh, the plan is, I'm going to wear this every week to see if there's a change in the size of my bump and at the end or near the end when the bump is a sizable figure we're going to go and take a photo shoot in the same dress and it's great because you know usually you buy a dress for a photo shoot and you wear it once and that's it. So I'm really looking forward to, since I bought this, it wasn't very expensive, it was like 10 pounds. Um, 
so I might get to um, wear it more often for you guys and take advantage of the money you pay for a, a maternity dress. So I'm going to get changed into this and then show you the bump and just talk a little bit more about what's been going on in terms of pregnancy and in general as the family. Stay tuned! What do you think? So I'm at 12 weeks pregnant. This is 12 weeks. Ta-da! So, what do you think of my bump? Is it sizable? <laughs> well, I've got to say, I feel pretty humongous already for 12 weeks because with my first birth, my first pregnancy, I didn't show for like 16 weeks. And the second one I did show a little bit sooner, probably 13 weeks. But I feel like I've been showing since like 8 weeks pregnant and I've been feeling so ill. Things that I want to record in, in my memory is that during this time, in the beginning, when I found out I was 4 weeks pregnant, it was right in the beginning, the, the, the positive signs showed up right away. And so I wondered if I had actually been more than 4 weeks, because I didn't use one of those estimates where it says one to two weeks, two to three weeks, three to four weeks pregnant or something like that. I just used a normal Tesco one that was like two pounds. And um, because a positive symbol came up so quickly, I thought maybe I'm a little further along than I am. And according to the scan that we took, I, I am a little bit more. They estimated the baby was about four or three days bigger than, than I had my original estimate. So. Um, this means that I would be due in May 2020 and sometime in May I usually come I usually give birth around 39 weeks pregnant um, But we'll see because my dating scan isn't until like two weeks from now So I won't know until next time Maybe next video what the NHS officially puts my due date at but like we know mums out there due dates don't mean very much <laughs> It just means a general time that you could possibly be due. So if anyone's ever pressuring you to get induced because of your due date, the actual date, I would definitely extend that and just trust your body because our bodies are so different. My body is different than your body. We grow at different rates. We have higher metabolisms and lower metabolisms. We have bigger genes and littler genes. So when it comes to due dates, I wouldn't trust that exact date. As, um, as a reference for intervention like induction. But anyway, uh, last time, in case you didn't know, we had a home water birth, completely natural, no drugs, no gas and air, no nothing. And after the baby came out, the second midwife came in and I felt like my hormones were completely disrupted. Uh, they were like looking at their watches, waiting for this placenta to come out. And so after about 30 minutes, they asked if I wanted to take the oxytocin, the, the jab in my thigh for the contractions to push the placenta out. And I agreed to that because I didn't, I really didn't want to go to the hospital and I thought that was the best way to prevent going to the hospital. But of course, it, it, the opposite thing happened. Um, I felt so stressed out. They pulled me out of the pool. I was on the bed trying to push this. I think I went on the toilet for a time too. And um, another 15 minutes went by and they were like, we need to transport you because they had tugged on the umbilical cord and it had separated from the placenta. And at that point you're like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to go into the hospital. So Felipe didn't really know what was going on. He didn't, um, he wasn't really, he was just focused on caring for the baby because they had taken the baby from me to get on the bed and push the placenta out, etc. Um, but anyway, thinking back now, I think I should have waited longer because with my first birth, it took me about 45 minutes to deliver the placenta. And after talking and looking online, 45 minutes to an hour is a normal expectant time for the placenta to come out. And there shouldn't be any, there wasn't any increased problems. People, they didn't say, oh, it looks like you have a lot of blood loss. But of course, after the going to the hospital, 30 minutes there, uh, going through manual placental um, extraction, um, they measured my blood loss, which was 2.2 liters, which is quite high. 
and you have to think, well, my body was open for that long, my uterus was open for that long, they had aggravated the placenta by pulling on the cord, um, I shouldn't have let them do that, really. Um, and so this time around, I really want to avoid that, and I want to have a natural third stage where the placenta comes out naturally, because I really want to avoid the hospital. And this is why. After the hospital and being there uh, for two days, I had a blood transfusion. When we got home, about eight days later, seven days later, our baby had a high fever. He had some sort of infection. And it was a urinary tract infection, which was really strange. But in order for them to find out what it was, he had to get, um, what is it called, when they, they had to stick a needle in his spine, to like a spinal fluid extraction to test that he wasn't infected there um, and then because of that I mean he clearly what I believe is that he got infected while he was in the hospital I mean where else are you gonna get exposure to, to so many different kinds of germs than then compared to being at home I didn't have any issues like this with my firstborn so yeah I felt like this was one of those um, things that I could avoid and I really should try to avoid because now he has a bit more um, he has like skin problems, lots of eczema, and my daughter never had that. Um, and I just feel like he gets sick a little bit more often than, than my daughter does, with like a bit stuffiness and sniffiness. So, but in general, I mean, we didn't have epidural, we didn't have um, Pitocin, Syntocin, non Oxytocin synthetically while he was in the womb. So I think he's protected from a lot of the dangers of those things. Um, but I still think exposure to the hospital at such a like newborn age It's just unnecessary. So I want to avoid that. That's my plan this time around So that's probably my main worry and my stress is like Having doctors and consultant midwives tell me what I should and shouldn't do because all they're looking at is the number Oh, you lost 2.2 liters. They don't really consider why and they don't they definitely don't think that they have anything to do with causing any problems um, but as we see there are so many things that midwives and consultants can do and even us as moms we do to ourselves if we aren't taught and educated and confident in having a calm peaceful birth so this time around i really hope it's going to be a smooth birth at home again, water birth, and no trip to the hospital, please. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below with any questions you might have about this pregnancy, but I hope you enjoy watching content about, um, not just about this pregnancy, but about being an American in the UK, um, home education, um, and birthing stuff. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot about on my channel, The Postmodern Mom. Uh, specifically classical conversations which is the home education curriculum that we use and also about this pregnancy and birth and natural birth because I'm also a trained doula and birth educator so I hope you enjoy this channel please subscribe and leave, leave a comment let me know what you'd like to hear any questions you might have thanks for watching bye I think there's such a joy in keeping a good home and watching your children grow up and cooking and supporting your husband